Hey guys, what's going on? We're going to get back to working on this Ranger project. If you remember in the last video, we took apart the top end and we found that there was a cheapy top end kit on this thing. The piston was pretty much whooped and had even scored up the cylinder. So I went ahead, ordered a brand new top end rebuild kit. And along with that, I ordered a Wiseco Genuine Piston since these rebuild kits kind of have a reputation for having really cheap knockoff pistons. So I'm going to hop right into it. Our parts did come in the mail, so I'm going to cut these things open and we'll see what we're working with. Oh man, what do we got? What do we got? More boxes inside boxes. Mega gray. Ooh, oil filter. Oh, this almost got tossed. Oh, what is this? Thread locker almost got tossed in the trash. All right, I think we cleared that one out. Wiseco, baby. All right, so let's open up these smaller boxes. This is probably the air filter. Yes, sir. Looks a little smaller than the air filter I pulled out, but as long as it has the right diameter and opening, it should work. Gaskets. Wow. Seems pretty nice. You can see the chain tensioner in there. It's pack packaged really nice. Kind of surprised, I'm not going to lie. And this is without a doubt rings. And now while we have our knife out, we'll go ahead and open up this Wiseco piston. So we can do a comparison and see if we can really notice a difference in build quality and just overall quality. So here are the rings. And the piston. Oh, it didn't come with one of those little Wiseco piston bags. Look at that. Pistons always look cool, man. Nice. All right, guys. So I have everything laid out here, including both pistons. And I, I got to say, I'm really... I'm pretty impressed with this kit. I mean, everything was packaged really well. And honestly, it seems like it's pretty good quality. Now, I mean, granted, just because it seems like it's good quality doesn't mean it is. I mean, the tolerances could be off. And I mean, God only knows what these things are actually made of. I'm really not worried about the cylinder. Um, I'll give a good look at that. You can see the cylinder walls are pretty nice. This patchy stuff is just because it's it's pretty dry in there, and that's the little bit of oil that was in there. I just kind of spread it around with my finger. It came packaged with the piston inside and then this foam cylinder thing under it for cushion. But all the surfaces seem very nice. Um, the Banshee cylinders had like – the edges had burrs and stuff on them that I had to clean up, and there was metal shavings even in the water jacket. And you can see this one's really clean. All the edges are very nice. I mean, this is really, I, I'm, I'm very surprised. I really am. Oh, there's a metal shaving. <clears throat> but I mean, in comparison to the Banshee cylinders, I would definitely say that this is a product that was manufactured with a little bit more quality standards. I'm not really worried about the quality of this. And I imagine that the, uh, the bore is correct, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully it's straight. Um, but anyways, I wanted to move on to the piston. And once again, I mean, 
I almost feel like I'm oh, like I shouldn't even be saying this, but I feel like this is actually a decent piston. At least it looks like it. It feels like it. But, you know, just like I said before, you know, who the hell knows what this is made of? I mean, granted, it is aluminum. It feels like aluminum. Uh, but what grade aluminum? That's the big question. And uh, the old piston, which I have right here, looks almost identical. You can see they have those two marks in the front to mark the front. Um, but it's not the same. You can see the circle in the middle here is a little bit bigger. Some of these markings for the valves are slightly different. This one uh, doesn't go off to the edge like this one does here. And on the inside, oh, you can see here the waffle print. This is smooth. And on the inside, it's relatively the same. Only one big thing that I noticed is the one that I pulled off has absolutely no markings on the inside. And this one with the kit, see if you can see in there, it has markings. And it even has a brand. It looks like uh, JCC or JGG. And uh, what else is in there? On the other side, there's numbers. You guys probably can't read that stuff. But usually knock off Chinese junk. 86, it looks like it says in there. Usually like a real cheap knockoff stuff, there's no markings at all. Or it's like a mimicking mark. Something like for the Makuni carburetors. The knockoff Makunis have these, you know, the fake logo on there. They want it to look genuine. Uh, but this actually appears to have some kind of manufacturing stamps on it, which is interesting to me. And uh, it just it really surprises me. And then comparing it to the Wiseco. Now, granted, the Wiseco is much nicer. I mean, look at it. Very nice edges. Everything is really nice on this. And that machining just looks so nice. And uh, I didn't weigh them. They feel a little bit, a little bit different. It feels like the Wiseco is just slightly heavier. Unfortunately, I don't have like a real nice digital scale. Um, but it does feel like the Wiseco is slightly heavier. If you look at the underside, you can see the skirt on the Wiseco is a good bit thicker. That's a nice sign of quality. And these are much more precise edges on the Wiseco. So I definitely think I made the right choice upgrading the piston, even if this one might be okay. I don't know. And like I said, I'm just really afraid that this, like the skirts might wear down a lot sooner than they should just because this might be a really cheap alloy. You just don't know when you order stuff like this. So I'd rather go with the name brand, at least for the piston. And as for the wrist pins, that I would, wanted to point out because these are quite different as well. The Wiseco is right here on the right side. And this is the knockoff brand. And uh, it's pretty obvious that this one is quite a bit lighter um, because it has like a tapered inner diameter. And not only that, not only is it tapered, but it doesn't even go to as small of a diameter as the, uh, the knockoff one. So this is much heavier. And uh, I think this makes up for the extra weight of the Wiseco and some making this a lighter, um, a lighter piston setup. So you're going to have lighter rotational mass. So this should actually be a better performing piston than the, than the, uh, the knockoff one. And then moving on to the rings, I didn't pull these out because I don't want them to get mixed up. But the rings, you know, it's kind of hard to tell any difference with, with these. I don't know if you guys can see them. Uh, the colors are a little bit different. But, I mean, otherwise, uh, it's what they're made up of. You know, the, uh, the knockoff rings might be some kind of composite junk. Really don't know. They seem like they're nice quality, but you know, just like before, we're going to stick with the Wiseco. And I noticed too, these wrist pin clips, look how thick the no name ones are. These are like super heavy duty. I mean, these are kind of like CP Carrillo status, man. If you ever use one of their pistons, if you guys recall in one of the Raptor videos, the, uh, the CP Carrillo, uh, piston clips are just so thick. They can be a pain in the ass getting them clipped in. You can see how thin the Wiseco ones are. 
But you know what? These do the job, and I really like using these because they're easy to get in and out. And of course, here's that air filter that we're going to be throwing on there. It is a good deal shorter than the OEM one you can see right here. But they're the same diameter. The inlet is the same. And without this metal screening, uh, this will probably have a similar amount of intake. And this isn't going to be a performance build, so it's going to serve the purpose that we want. So that should work just fine. And of course, a cheapy oil filter. Who the hell knows what kind of fiber is in there, but we're gonna we're, we'll run it. And then last but not least, came with some gasket maker. And uh, I've never heard of Quality Optimus before, but I mean, it looks like it's made in the USA. I don't know. I've never heard of this stuff, but it actually looks half decent. I don't know. Say no to drugs. And then this uh, Vizbella. 6271 red Loctite high strength thread locker. I don't know if that's the equivalent to red Loctite or if it's not quite as strong. I don't know what the heck we're going to be using this on, but it did come with this. So I'm inclined to actually use this stuff and see what it's all about. Now I know this is really Mickey Mouse and like super low tech, but I did want to real quick weigh these pistons and just see if we have any kind of noticeable difference here, I'm just going to use this crappy food scale. It's just all I have on hand right now. So the first piston we're going to weigh is the Wiseco. And it looks like uh, right about 350 grams. So the Wiseco is right about 350. Now we'll try this no-name brand piston. And it looks like just a little bit less than 350. It's like, I don't know, 340, 340 grams. Now let's see what the wrist pins weigh. First we'll do the Wiseco. And then it's, I don't know, right around 50, 50 grams. And the no name. And there's the big difference. That is more than twice the weight. It went just over 100 grams right there in the wrist pin. And I'll show you if we do both. Right back up there around 340. With the wrist pin brings it to pretty much 450 on the dot. So 450 grams for the no name. Throw that Wiseco piston back on there and the wrist pin. And that's about 420, almost on the dot. A little bit higher, maybe like 422, something like that. So it's about 30 grams lighter, the Wiseco piston. Okay, guys, so don't hold me to those numbers with that scale on these pistons. I don't know exactly how accurate that scale is, although I don't think it's too far off. However, I do think it's an accurate representation to see which piston is actually lighter and which one's heavier, and clearly it is the Wiseco. Now, we're going to go ahead and get to installing this stuff. So the first thing I'm going to do is just get all our gasket contact areas cleaned up. Obviously, we don't have to do the cylinder. However, I am going to hit this with a quick, a quick scotch bright and wipe it down with some acetone or some denatured alcohol or something just to make sure there's no contaminants or anything that would uh, mess with our gasket sealer or gasket itself. And uh, of course, we'll clean off the case side, get all that stuff ready. I want to clean up the head, make that nice and clean just so that everything can go together nice and easy, not get any grit in between any surfaces and get a good, nice seal.
Alright guys, so I've actually gone ahead and done quite a bit of cleaning and some decking of my cylinder. Let me show you. So we got it right here. It is all decked. It's not perfect, but it's a hell of a lot better than it used to be. I did 320 grit and then I went with 600 grit and clean this up really nicely. Like I said, it's not perfect. You can see there's still a tiny bit tiny bit of pitting, um, but I took a good amount off and I didn't want to go crazy. So I didn't want to take too much off, but I think this is going to be fine. I cleaned this up really nice. And once again, guys, didn't go crazy. I don't have a parts washer here, but in comparison to what it was, it's like night and day difference. So that's ready to go. Looks like our valves came out really nice. And, um, yeah, so I cleaned them up with, I did the automatic transmission fluid technique. I let that soak for about three or four hours. And um, then I used a soft wire wheel, pretty much came right off, wiped off the rest of the residue, cleaned off the gasket material with a cookie wheel, a uh, mild one, and uh, then I decked it like I just said. So I'm pretty happy with that. Got our old piston, old cylinder, stuff is junk. Cleaned up all of our covers. Everything's ready to go. I even cleaned up this exhaust elbow. Hell yeah. And now let me show you. We're all clean over here too. Cylinder is ready to go on. Got the cylinder sitting here. You can see it's looking all brand new because it is brand new. And here's our Wiseco piston. Already took the liberty of lining our rings up and getting them straight. Got our service manual over here, making sure we did everything right. I did check my ring gap before you jump down my throat. You can see I got my feeler gauge right here. Didn't want to film everything with this build, so let's get it on. We're going to put this piston on, throw that piston uh, wrist pin in, and a clip, and make sure all our rings are still in the right orientation. Then we'll slide our cylinder on. Going to put some assembly lube in this bad boy so that we don't fry it on the first start, and we'll be moving from there. say that it's a stupid design but it's kind of a stupid design <laughs> well I don't like it we'll, we'll leave it at that um, so I just pulled that cover off it's called a PVT cover uh, because on the clutch side or rather the flywheel side of the motor right here usually on most you know Yamahas and Hondas and everything there is a bolt right here you can remove and you can get a hold of the crank with a breaker bar turn the engine over and they do have the window right here you can open up. You pull that bolt out and you can see if you're at top dead center with a mark on the flywheel. That's all good. But Polaris, Polaris thought it would be a good idea to make it so that you have to remove this PVT cover, which is actually eight bolts instead of just being able to take out one bolt. And then you have to grab hold of the clutch to spin the motor over. So, I mean, maybe there's a reason for that that I'm not aware of, but I don't really like that design. So I was just pulling that off because I wanted to make sure that our piston moved freely, which it does, before we go and uh, bolt our cylinder down. 
And we'd have to take that off anyway, because we're gonna have to get our motor to top dead center to get our timing right and make sure our valve clearances are good and everything like that. But man, I just think that's a weird design. So our cylinder is on. I think that went really well. Tightened it down to 46 foot-pounds. Those little 8 millimeter bolts went down to 6 foot-pounds. I actually bumped it up to 7. Whatever. Um, now, some of you guys were sending me DMs and commenting on my last video saying, upgrade your gaskets to OEM or, you know, a higher grade because I went with an upgraded piston. But, you know, these gaskets actually look pretty decent. I know some of you guys are going to be like, ah, oh, Mark, you idiot. Those Chinese gaskets are junk. But check these out. They actually, and it's kind of hard to tell, you know, just by looking at the video, but these things are actually pretty decent quality. Um, I don't think I'm going to have a problem with these. I think these gaskets are going to work just fine. You can see it came with a gasket for everything. We got an exhaust gasket. And uh, our head gasket here is really heavy duty. It feels just as good as any gasket that's come in like a Tusk kit or a Wiseco kit. And I, yeah, I really don't think there's gonna be a problem with that, so I'm gonna run them. Right, guys check it out made some progress here tonight got the head on cylinders on looking nice and pretty we're getting ready to do the timing wait for tomorrow for that because it's like midnight getting pretty tired here pretty weird procedure tightening down these head bolts it was like you tighten them down in a pattern then you loosen them and then you tighten them and you go in quarter turns it was uh it was definitely weird so uh Definitely appreciate all you guys watching my videos and everything. Make sure to check out my YouTube page if you haven't already. Comment, like, and subscribe. Oh, you guys rock. I'm going to bed. Peace. All right, guys. That was actually a little clip for my Instagram page that I threw up. But we are back today, and we are about to do the timing on this thing. So let's do the timing, get the entire top end all together, throw some oil in this bad boy, and let's see if it runs.
All right, guys, so we got this thing all together, at least motor-wise. I didn't put the body panels on and stuff like that. Let me show you. You can see it's all together. Motor's all tight, no missing bolts or anything. Got everything plugged in. And we got oil in there. All the bolts, all the bolts are tight in the spec per the manual. Valves are checked. Everything is good. I did skip a couple steps as far as filming. I just didn't film everything, but I didn't skip anything in the actual work. So this thing should fire right up. Now what we have to do since we pulled the oil lines off is purge the oil. Thank you, Weenand, for giving me that heads up. My subscribers are awesome. I love you guys. So what we're going to do is purge this, and it's actually a really simple process. On top of this oil tank, you're supposed to pinch off the um, this relief line about two inches back. So I just put a vice grip on here gently. That should pinch that off, and then you're supposed to fire the motor up for 10 to 20 seconds, and that should purge it. And when you pull off the vice grip, it's supposed to, you're supposed to be able to hear some air relieving, and that's how you know the system is purged, and then you're good to go. And then check your oil lines again. So for this first run, we'll be running it dry without any coolant. We're just going to make sure that it fires up and everything. And then, of course, I want to tidy up these junky wires here. There's some other things I want to go over and just make sure everything's good. Obviously, I want to clean this thing up, get all this bullshit out, clean up the back of these panels and everything. And then I'll get everything together, put some coolant in it. You know, this thing will be done. Probably throw it up at 5500 bucks. So let's see if we'll see if this thing starts up right now and purge the oil. So I don't know if you guys could hear that, but that little suction sound, that was the sound that we wanted to hear. So that means the oil system is purged. So we can go ahead, top off our levels and everything. But it's again midnight, so I want to get this wrapped up and go to sleep. Um, so the next video, I don't know if I'm going to film it or not. I'm probably just going to clean this thing up. Like I said, we'll tidy everything up. I'm probably going to do all that stuff, and then I'll just show you the finished product, and we'll ride this thing around, make sure the transmission works, the four-wheel drive, all that stuff. And... Hell, maybe we'll even take this thing for a ride. So let me know in the comments section below if you think I should take this thing out for one quick rip before I go ahead selling it. And uh, yeah, guys, I appreciate you watching my videos as always. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this content. Remember to leave me a comment below if you're something that you don't like. So that way I can improve in the future. And I appreciate all you guys. Make sure you have a great weekend. And I will see you guys in the next video.